He sends me up to his room to grab some clothes. When I come back down, J.D. has stuffed all our clothes into the washing machine, which is a sort of closet off the kitchen. He pours in a ton of liquid detergent, turns on the water, and punches on. I'm pulling on a clean t-shirt of his when Leah walks in. She looks at me, then at J.D., and says, What are you guys up to? We were riding our bikes in the ravine, J.D. says. Q had this idea we could jump the stream. He gives me a look. I should have known. Q is me. My name is Quentin. Q to my friends. Leah shakes her head like, of course I would suggest something that dumb. Of course J.D. would want to give it a try. Of course that would explain why she's just caught me changing to J.D.'s clothes in the middle of the kitchen. I stare at J.D., trying not to let my face show what I'm thinking, which is, this guy is good. He can lie with the best of them. No, he can lie better than most of them. Leah says, well, I hope you didn't tow your bike, J.D., because if you did, Dad's going to freak. I freeze. Our bikes. Geez, they're in J.D.'s garage. But there's nothing about them that would give people the idea that we tried to jump a stream with them, let alone that they ended up in a, a stream. They aren't wet. They aren't muddy. Nothing like that. Don't sweat it, J.D. tells his sister. Even now, I can't help noticing for the millionth time how pretty she is. I wonder, how come I only started noticing recently? I've known J.D. since kindergarten, which means I've known Leah that long, too. But for most of the time I've known her, she was like flowery wallpaper, always in the background, always kind of annoying. Not anymore. Now I can hardly take my eyes off her. She has thick brown hair and dark brown eyes that are the color of coffee, just like J.D.'s. She's tall like J.D. and slender, and she makes my heart pound and my mouth go dry. Her lips are pink and soft-looking, and boy, you don't need much imagination to know how it would feel to kiss them. That's been on my mind a lot, that and how J.D. would take it if all of a sudden I, te if all of a sudden I tell him how I have a thing for his sister. Now I think I'll never get the chance. Not after what we just did. Yep. We're going out to the garage right now, J.D. says. We're going to clean everything up before Dad gets home. Our bikes will be as good as new. He'll never know. He flashes her a smile. She shakes her head again, but I can read in her eyes how much she loves him. They're twins. They have this bond. He says it's weird having a twin. He says when they were little, they used to finish each other's sentences. He says half the time, he's positive she can tell what he's thinking. I look at Leah now and wonder what she knows. I look at J.D. too. He's grinning at her. I bet he's confident that he's snowing her. I hope he's right. Don't make a mess out there while you're cleaning up, Leah says. Boy, does she ever know J.D. You know how Dad is. We go from the kitchen to the garage. Our bikes are dry. There's no mud on them, nothing at all on them that I can see. But J.D. fills a bucket with soapy water anyway and hands me a sponge. We set to work washing down our bikes. We rinse them. J.D. fills another bucket with soapy water. We wash them again and rinse them again. All together we soap and rinse three times before J.D. is satisfied. He looks at me and says, it's going to be okay. I already told you, nobody saw, nobody knows. He's forgetting one thing. I saw. 
I know.